Now, I'm, I'm loath to do this, but I have to. And we'll get everyone's opinions. I know how Chris feels. I think Dustin feels a little differently. I feel a little differently. But this is a PlayStation podcast, and we're going to talk about it nonetheless. Yeah. Caswell wrote in and said, hey, or hello, check back in soon. What? Why just why after the teaser of a teaser of a teaser to the 10th power trailer we got for Abandoned? I'm just sitting here questioning my life choices as to why I kept updating an app for three days to see what would happen. I'm going to be annoyed no matter what it is at this point. However, I am impressed that this thing has been able to take the entire industry by storm. Whether they believe this game is something bigger or not, every website, outlet, and person is talking about this game. Is there any other game that has been able to create the same level of speculation and fervor in the industry? I don't even think Red Dead Redemption 2 or God of War or Last of Us Part 2 or Tac 2, the staff of dreams come close. As always, keep fucking that chicken. <laughs> Didn't they just re-release TAC 2? I think they did. <laughs> TAC 2? Yeah, TAC was like the... Uh, TAC was, and the Power of Juju, right? Yeah. Oh, okay. When you when it, TAC and the Power of Juju, that makes... That rings a bell. But, yeah. um, oh, no, it wasn't TAC, though. I'm thinking of Ty that they just re-released. Ty the Tasmanian Tiger. Oh. All right. So, which I which is not, not a very good game. No. Chris, I want to start with you on this. So, we're talking about Abandoned. I, before I even kick it over to you, let me just give everyone a little bit of an update. So, the... The trailer app went up. There was the delay, as we know. Then they posted just the four second walking on wood thing we got, right? With some weird this, that, and the other thing in there. But then IGN and a website NME both published interviews with Hassan Karaman in quotes. And people can go read these these interviews. You can read them as being sad in some way. But I think it's still nonsense, and uh, I have a lot to say about this, but before I do, I know people are tired of hearing about this. I think Chris represents more of that side of it, and so mm. I want to let Chris say what he has to say first. Yeah, I mean, I'm not sure how much new I have to add. I, I'm just at a point now where I just don't know if I really care what this is. Obviously, this is a PlayStation podcast. We will play this, and I, I'm not the kind of person who's going to let like marketing necessarily like cloud judgment as to whether or not the final product is good like I, I could be like all right well that was a good game the marketing was terrible or that was a bad game the marketing was terrible like i'm pretty good at uh compartmentalization in that way but as of right now my interest in this game is is very very low because the tedium and the i mean we were literally just talking about disrespecting people's time i mean i can't think of anything more disrespectful of people's time than being like hey we're gonna have an update today and then like Oh, sorry, it's not working. And then going radio silent for a day and then the same thing happening for three days only for the update to be the exact thing that they tweeted the first day on Twitter. It's like at a certain point there, I don't want to say it's I don't want to attribute any malice to what could be attributed to uh, ignorance, but it's just such a dumb way to market a thing in, in such a way that it doesn't leave me feeling curious or intrigued it just leaves me feeling frustrated and annoyed and those feelings are probably going to carry over to the full game when it's actually unveiled regardless of what it is even if it does look really cool and even if it does end up being like a really interesting game that is actually like a 10 out of 10 i'm always still even when it's even if it is great i am always going to remember this was such a frustrating experience getting to this point you know and i would still be like hey it's a good game go play it but I don't know. I, 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 I almost wish that I didn't know about this. You know, I always I almost wish this was like just off to the side and I just didn't pay attention to it because it's just so annoying. But that's really all I have to say about it, you know, which I've, you know, said it ad nauseum. Indeed. Dustin, where do you fit into this? Because I. <laughs> so I think people are, in my opinion, people are missing the forest for the trees with this one. People are really stuck on this. There, there are a few layers to this. And I actually mm. expressed this on Twitter because people are like, well, this isn't a story. Why are you giving it so much attention? And I'm like, anyone who's been in this industry for a long time knows this. This is fucking weird. Yeah, and it is a story. It, yeah. And it's definitely a story. This is this is weird for a lot of reasons. And I wouldn't expect people to not necessarily or to necessarily know those reasons if you're not in the industry. But I'm trying to explain to you the many ways that this is weird and people I think are hung up on the Kojima Konami weirdness, which is its own thing. But that aside, it's yeah. all weird. 
still even, like even without that connection it's just bizarre that this random studio that has never really like fully delivered on a promise before just has access to the playstation ecosystem in a way that they're able to publish a trailer app right something that's never been done before and they have like all these like different contracting studios but they're still a small team and it's like and no one outside of hassan caraman has been like there's nobody else who works at this. Yeah, no it's one weird. works there they apparently work with noir now which is a, a noir is a um uh, for contract studio, a pretty expensive one. I actually think they worked on Horizon. And yeah, uh, you can just tell that there's something wrong with this. I don't know what it is. I have no idea what it is. But here's the thing, Dustin, is that the more interviews that are posted where they're like, this dispels everything. I'm like, no, it doesn't. This makes it worse. Every time I read something, like the NME interview, I think, talks about how they he had to pay back like a $200,000 loan on the last game. It's like, really? Who the, how the fuck did you pay that back? Like, at, at, where did you get that money from? It talks about how he uses high-end motion capture for this game. Motion capture is so expensive in the video game industry. I want to put this into context for people that first-party teams within Sony's ecosystem have started building their own mocap studios in their buildings so that they don't have to go to third-party places to do it and they can even rent theirs out to outside entities and make money on them. So this isn't something you just do. And everyone with Unreal 5 is like, well, everyone's had early access to Unreal Engine 5. Well, no, that's not true. Not when you consider that the game has apparently been developed on Unreal Engine 5 before. It's a big deal if a game is on Unreal 5. Mm -hmm. We're still getting new releases on Unreal 4 right now. So there's a lot wrong with it. And I wanted and, and my biggest problem, Dustin, is just like, why doesn't anyone ask him the right questions? That to me is the most frustrating thing. And I've said it a million times. Give me five minutes. That's all I want. And I would ask, like, who is your liaison at Sony? Like your, your dev liaison. How many dev kits and test kits did you get? How much did they cost when you when you rented them? Right. Like you can ask very specific questions. How did you get access to UE5 and assets like that so early? Um. How did you make a deal with PlayStation to get an app? That's never happened. No one's ever done anything like this before. How did you pitch that? Um, who's funding your game? Who's publishing your game? Do you have any relationship with Sony at all? Do you have any relationship with Konami? Do you have any relationship with Kojima? Do you uh, not? Not one of these questions are being asked. And my and my right. whole thing is like, why? In fact, in the enemy article, it says like, we can debunk these rumors. It's not a Silent Hill game. It's not Metal Gear. Uh, in fact, we know exactly what it is. Hassan gave us an exclusive rundown of Abandoned, including plot points, how it plays, just about everything we could ever want to know. Hassan asked us to keep it to ourselves. But one thing is that we can say is Abandoned is absolutely not what you think it is, not even close. People don't get that just because this may not or probably isn't a Konami or Kojima project. It makes it almost weirder in, 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 in its own way. Anyway, yeah. I'm rambling because I am so annoyed by how people don't understand this. Dustin. So... Okay, I have three pointers about this. And the first thing is that there's been a discussion about uh, whether or not Blue Box and Abandon is worth covering anymore. In fact, uh, recently the host of Podcast Beyond said that they're not even going to touch it anymore because there are uh, other games that are worthwhile of the exposure over covering something like Abandon. That's their right to choose to do that. Yeah, I sure. think he's wrong uh, because, like you said, Colin, this is. And this goes into my second point is a lot of people are justifiably mad and upset and annoyed right now. OK, I get that. And it's because they feel like they were misled. And I think that's a very justified way to feel. But if you are an observer of this industry and you are interested in this industry, this is one of the biggest stories of the year. Whether it's Kojima, whether it's Sony, or whether it's it's nothing. We have like, this is like a Kate Holmes Theranos situation, if anyone knows about that. Yeah, good this, reference. This woman that was the CEO of this company, Theranos, that offered to do like, oh, you can just do this one little blood test and it will tell you like everything that's wrong with you. And she was able to gain millions and millions of dollars in funding and there was never any product, ever. They never got the product to work and she's in jail now because of it there's a great hbo documentary yeah i was gonna my say point, that's, that's what i learned about it about it yeah so my point is even if this isn't anything it is still 
worth covering because we may have Kojima reference here, the man who sold the world, who was able to complete dude. If this guy is nobody, this is so insanely like crazy that he was able to completely dupe the entire internet, get his game trending. Was his strategy a good one? That's, I mean, still not over. We don't know at this point, but either way, I would argue it is very much worth talking about regardless. And the nice thing, as we talked about earlier, if you don't care, then use a timestamp and you can skip over this conversation and right. read it from your Twitter. The last thing is calling these, these interviews. And I have to shout out our, our contributor, Hogue Law, uh, Rick Hogue, for his video that he just put out. I think it was today on Thursday. And he went over the IGN article in detail. I highly recommend people go and, and watch this video because IGN, as you said, Colin, gave him so many softballs and they never asked the hard questions, the real questions like funding. Hassan in these interviews talks and go breaks down all of the failed projects. And yet it's like, where'd the money come from? How yeah. have you been afloat since 2015? And you've never released a product ever. Like also they said, he said in that interview with IGN that that blood curse, whatever game is right. that, that he's mysteriously played on PSN somehow got an uploaded package to the public PSN in which he's allowed to play. Okay. That's a whole nother thing that that doesn't happen. But he also claimed that that game will come out and it will be free. Right. I mean, he's making he's extraordinary claims. I'm sorry, Chris. He's just such a weirdo. Like, I don't understand this person. <laughs> like, this is very. This is <laughs> but don't you understand that that is why th that that is why this is weird? I actually agree with you completely. First of all, awesome poll with uh, Katie Holmes. R really interesting story. If people don't know about that. And it was more than millions. I mean, I think it was like hundreds of millions of dollars wrapped up. In yeah. That. Insane um, money. And yeah, they never made like it never was going to exist. This this Theranos product that they they um got. But we don't know what the situation is here. But what you really outlined well, Dustin, was that no matter how this ends up, it's a really interesting story because it, mm. here are the outcomes. It's Kojima. That's interesting. It's Konami. That's interesting. It's Sony. That's interesting. OK, so those are like the positive outcomes. There's actually a fourth positive outcome which is that it's an independent game of some sort and it's good. Okay, so we'll put that into the pile. Those are four outcomes. The fifth outcome is that this is a long con. The sixth outcome is that there is no game of it's vaporware of some sort. There are all the other outcomes that come from this all lead to a path of like, wow, that's really fucking interesting. Could be failed. It could be, uh, an, it could be nonsense. Where did the money come from? How do you get a company like Noir to make a game with you? How do you get Unreal Engine 5 access like that? How, why do you keep teasing your game so overtly as a Konami game, knowing exactly what you're doing? You know, it, the SL thing I let go, but when you put a picture out who is basically big boss, that's when I'm like, okay. Yeah. You know, you know what right. you're doing. <laughs> I, yeah, but, I think what's, what's, what's most interesting about it is like all those possibilities are, seem pretty much equally likely because it's just I such an all agree. over the... Because it's just such an all over the play. Like, I really have no idea what this could be. Like, this very well could be because this dude's history of like making games is like so awful. So like, how the hell did he secure Sony money? And like, just like, and all the like the the flipped assets on the Unreal Store, this very well could be like vaporware, you know, like, and it's or it could be a Konami misdirect or a Kojima misdirect. I am not so sold on that, but. I, it, I it, this this is objectively an interesting story. It's frustrating to me, but it's certainly interesting. Right. Like, that's, the, doubt. that's the only point that I think we have to all agree on in the audience, too. I implore you and indeed defy you to read that interview on IGN and tell me that it's not weird. Good. I mean, go and do yeah. it. I, I, I have to cover this like it's just too. I've been in this industry a long time. This isn't normal. The outcome of this is going to be interesting, no matter what the outcome is. We are in that position. And that I didn't put us in that position, but I'm not going to ignore the news because some people don't want to talk about it anymore. And I'll also say this, guys, just to, to wrap it up a little bit. 
what the fuck else do you want us to talk about? There's nothing to talk about. In fact, yeah. we were blessed with the reins of mana today with some of the news items that came out because this episode was going to be probably one of the 90 minute bangers that Christian wanted. So there's nothing to talk about. So it's not like we're like, hey, guys, go talk about this. Why are you talking? It's like, well, that's why our shows are four hours sometimes. So we can talk about abandoned and talk about everything else. But right now. This is weird. And mm-hmm. I have a lot of questions. Oh, and so I guess I'll say this, too. I reached out to him publicly to get him on the show. And Micah reached out to him privately as the coordinator of Last Day Media to get him on the show. I will record with Hassan Karaman at any time, anywhere. Straight up. Let's make it happen. I mean, anywhere digitally, by the way. I'm not going to the Netherlands. 